Okay, very good. So we, we said that if the mezuzah fell, Yaakov, if the mezuzah fell from the door on Shabbat, can you put back the mezuzah on Shabbat or no? Yes. Uh -huh, Borea, what do you say? No, I have. So we learned that. Because you can learn from it. <laughs> mezuzah is not mukti on Shabbat. Why? Because mezuzah, Shalom, what's the reason mezuzah is not mukti? You can learn from it. You can learn from it. Very good. Put it on tape. You cannot yes. put it on tape. God forbid. If a person put puts on tape, he's Mehalel Shabbat. Put it on. So that's what we learned. We learned if the mezuzah falls together with the case, then you cannot put it back again because you're not allowed to glue the case on Shabbat. Okay. But are you allowed to sleep in that house or no? Yes. Ari, what do we said? Yes. Yes. Why? You said the God right answer. Why? We ready for Shakol? ברשות מוריי ורבותיי, ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שהכל נהיה בדברו. And what's the reason we said it's allowed to sleep in that house on Shabbat? Quickly, huh? Yeah, allowed. Allowed, why? Because of Shabbat, because you cannot fix it. Because you cannot fix it, that's the reason. Where else did we see such a concept? By tzitzit. We said at the four corners, person is not allowed to wear if he doesn't have kosher tzitzit on it. But is he allowed to wear it if it's yes. on Shabbat or no? Yes. yes. Why? Because you're supposed to tie it, and I cannot tie it on Shabbat. What should I do? Got it? Very good. Now, what if the 30th day is on Shabbat? The, you're renting a house in America, outside Israel. How many days do you have in order to put a mezuzah? When you rent a house in America, how many days you have? So we said it depends on if it's on a contract or without a contract. If it is with a contract, oh, you did your John Bo. If it is in a Poshki Sepo. If it is on a contract, what right we learn? Right, right away. With Braha or without Braha? With. Huh? Yes, Poshki Sepo. Yeah. With Braha or without Braha? With. If it's on a contract? With Braha on the first day or without Braha? Yeah. When you bring your no, stuff, no, no. you said. No? Right, that's the first day. No bracha. After two with bracha or without bracha? Without bracha. We said without bracha. Well, after two I mean, remember that? After 30 days? Uh, on the 30th with, day. After the 30th day, uh, you, you take it out, check it. you give it to somebody to check it, and you are putting it back with the bracha. Yeah. Got it? So, you check it so it's a mistake that people make yeah. muzos on no parties the before uh, 30 days are up. Because it's rented. The only paraf time the Akubov is supposed to bracha on the mezuzah when you rent is after 30 days. Is this clear? And when the 30 days start? No contract. We saw that 30 days. Huh? What's the difference contract, no contract? Good question. And we said, tell us, remember? Tagidlo? What's the difference then if it's with contract or without contract? Anyway, I have to wait 30 days. That's Shalom's uh, question. Maybe the house is not mine. Yours is Say, say better. You're saying something almost. Say, say better. Maybe it's going to be canceled. Oh. No. Without a contract, I don't have to even put it on the first day. Huh? Why? Because maybe I'm not going to be here. Whenever I sign a contract, chances I'm not going to be here are very slim. Everything could happen, but are very slim. <laughs> so since after he signed a the contract, there is a bigger chance he stay here. Put the message on the first day. Don't say bracha. Don't say bracha. Until the 30th day will come. On the 30th day, David, you tell you come, you take off the mezuzah, you give it to check, you put it back with the beracha. Now, what if the 30th day fell on Shabbat? On Shabbat, you cannot put, glue the mezuzah the case with the mezuzah. So the what do you do? Shabbat and then so the says Ravadi, you can glue the case empty before Shabbat, right. but make sure by that, this type of case. That is you're able to either put from the top or just from the bottom without the mezuzah screwing. without need of screwing or gluing uh, like pieces the, together. The, the one either yeah. just with a cap, but don't get me mezuzah case that you'll have to g stuff it to the thing to stick it. Glue it. Stick it on. Stick it. Stick it on. I don't even say it in English. I said tick tick. How do you call click this thing? Click it. Click, click, click it on. Yeah, Don't get the mezuzah case that you will need to click it on. You'll get a mezuzah case that you will be able to just put on the mezuzah from the top, the scroll inside the case, or from the bottom, like in, in this case that we have over here. Sticker that goes down. The and then he's going to make brachano. On Shabbat. On Shabbat. Yes. Huh? Yes. Ask somebody a riddle. 
How can you say bracha? Ligboa mezuzah on Shabbat. Yeah. I just told you how. What's the answer? Huh? No, click it. Put the case before Put the case Shabbat. Before Shabbat. When well, the 30th day fell on Shabbat, the, you're putting the case before Shabbat, gluing it all over. And then on Shabbat, you'll say bracha, likba mezuzah on the front door, or if you want to, bobo, bibi, whatever you want to put over there, to say the bracha. And uh, the rest of the house is going to be with mezuzot that you're going to place now. Bam, 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 the rest of the house. All of them you're going to do on Shabbat. Only one bracha. Muzot, no? On Shabbat. Only one bracha. With bracha. One bracha, yeah. For the entire house. Some Bukharians have a custom to give one for the brother, a second one for the mother, third one for the uncle. Mother for. Yeah, banner also can say bracha. Yeah. 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 They have this minhag. It's not the best minhag. Best minhag is when one says bracha, then everybody in mind. But in order to avoid arguments, there is room to say. To Bobo, say bracha, but don't have anybody in mind. And then Amak can get involved. Oh. And then the uncle can get involved. Why? Because every one of them said bracha to themselves. It's not the best because you're causing bracha, shalot bracha. But there is room to say it's, it's for kavod, it's sarif for kavod. It's not the best thing to do. Uh, uh, 30 years ago, we start from the when you bring it stuff to you. Right. So when the when the thirtieth day Boris starts from the time he puts his stuff in, not from the time he has the kids. Not from when he says the contract. Uh, no, that's what I'm saying. Not from that time. From the time he's actually start living inside. Sleeping. Got it? Sleeping or moving? No, no, no. Living inside means having his stuff inside. Do it slowly, slowly. Yeah. It started from the first day you start moving in. Now when you start. A person cannot sleep sometimes. You put right now, let's say, just the sofa. He moved the dining room, then he moved the kitchen, whatever it is. He goes step by step. Abraham, Sadiq. Behor, John. Behor, you gonna stand? Wow. You know, right now it's hard. It counts a hundred times for all the years that person missed ever in his life. Counts when it's hard, you still learn, you don't give up, a hundred times more. So your zakhot is greater than people that have an easier time. Zafka hundred or just... <laughs> ah, here's Zafka a hundred. So, yeah. It's not a hundred so many million like it says by the by the laws of Shabbat, yeah. It says, Mea pa tov mit ahad betsa'ar mi mea shelo betsa'ar. That's, that's the language in the Gemara. Okay? Very good. So now everybody on the same page. We moved forward to meat. Raw meat. Is it mukta be Shabbat or no? What if it's frozen meat? What if it is frozen chicken? All of the above is not mukta. What's the reason, Ari? Because some people could eat it. How? Don't ask, but it's doable. Raw chicken. I don't know how people. Frozen raw chicken. Tobu yo pakusho. I don't even know if cannibals will eat that. I don't know. Yeah, we'll but, even before they eat the yeah. But uh, <laughs> Rabbi Yosef says, in days of Hazar, people used to eat it, therefore we're not going to change the rule to make more strict. Okay? Very well, we are number two. Now, what happens if the meat became spoiled and smells bad on Shabbat? So now it's not edible anymore to anybody. Now it's mukta no? You left the meat outside overnight, two, two three days, will Yom Tov? You know, two days and then Shabbat, come Shabbat, Shabbat ve'in afash, that's it. It doesn't smell good already. And it's, on Friday it smelled good. Shabbat it became not good. So when Shabbat came in, did ya, what do we say? It was not mukti. Why? It smelled good. Shabbat morning it became spoiled. It was 100 degrees outside. Miami sometimes gets 107, 108. 108, you know, mamash. It gets very hot over there. 108 Gematria So sometimes get to Gehenom numbers over there. 108 Fahrenheit. It's Tikkun for everybody. You ever been there? 108? <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> you get out of the car to your house, you wait. So, 
How how sweat and it's uh, mo- very moist. The air when it's uh, that hot, forget it. <laughs> I think the other way around. They have to stay longer until payment starts up. Because they used to. It. They used to it. <laughs> They make it higher for them. <laughs> the humidity is there. The humidity is very good, yeah. So now, what if it's spoiled on Yom Tov? Oh, sorry, on Shabbat. Says Rav Vadi, Rafilu Yisriach Be Shabbat, Mutar. De Ra'uy Laklavim. Even if it is, became spoiled on Shabbat, it's not Muktzeh. Yeah, because I can give it to dogs. Because it's still fit to dogs. Clear? And if it's not even edible for the dog? Like, if a person right now goes outside, Ari, and he saw a dead scroll. Uh-huh. Squirrel? A, a scroll, squirrel? I go, yeah, squirrel. Squirrel. Da. Malach Gabriel. It says over there. Squirrel. <laughs> and he wants to pick it up. <laughs> to throw it out. It's nest is in front of his house. Is he allowed to pick it up or is Mukti? It's a grandma. Huh? Says uh, it's allowed. Yeah. Why? It's nasty for him. Not only that reason. All the Shabbat, no? Uh, because the Nevela, that, that food, that it has a meat, that a dog could eat. Yeah, but we don't say that the fact that it was uh, not that before. That's the Hiddush. Even when Shabbat came in, it was still alive. On Shabbat morning, somebody Halal Shabbat did on them. Kaddish. <laughs> he squashed, squashed him. What do we say? Lechvot Shabbat Kodesh. He was worried about the Sudash Lashit of the dog. <laughs> it's dead now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you yeah, can throw it out. Yeah. It's, you can give it to a dog. Since it could have fit the dog with that, it's not mukta. Even if it's alive, still. Even if it's alive, yeah. Somebody one time asked me, he had worms that he used to feed the fish with this. Mm-hmm. It's a... Bait. He said he had a special fish, what was it, 10 years ago he asked me this, maybe yeah. 11 years. He, I think it was a horse, because a shahol lavan, shahol lavan, black, horse white, black. Is it Nikra? Horse fish. Horse fish? Horse fish. I don't know the names. <laughs> Special fish. He needed to give him special seahorse. Sea yeah. He needed to give him special worms that they are alive. Yeah. Now he throws them into the water for Shabbat. Can you do that or no? The seahorse is going to he, uh, kill them. Yeah, but it's not visible directly. And those things are choked in the water when you throw it into the water. What about killing? So one rabbi told him not allowed. He asked me, I told him I have to look. I looked into it and then I wrote a long chuva. I think it was one of my longest chuvot that I wrote on this conclusion, it's allowed. There's many reasons why, bottom line, it's allowed. So what do we see? Even if the, the animal is alive, they, he opens the thing and they move. <coughs> alive, uh, I remember, the worms. Very expensive, special for this horse fish. Yeah, yeah seahorse. Well, you know what the seahorse is? Huh? It's in, no, it's in the aquarium. It's okay. small, they're not big. I call this, you know what I'm talking about? Like a question mark. That's yeah. This guy. He's, uh, he eats special food. And it has to be fresh. Uh-huh. If you kill them before, I told him, if you kill it before Shabbat, he said he doesn't touch it. So it has to be Ben Yomo. It's like the spoiled kids. If it's not fresh, they don't eat. <laughs> so, uh, you, bottom line, you could throw it into the aquarium of Shabbat, and even though the fish is gonna, the, this thing is gonna bite it and kill it, it's no problem. It's not mukta. So this definitely the mouse. The mice? Not definitely. So to the mouse, that you, if you caught mouse on the mouse trap, uh-huh. not you caught, sorry. The, the mouse got caught on the mouse trap, uh, you will be allowed to move it. 
it's not considered to be mukti the Shabbat, even though he's still alive or if it's dead. Even though generally, ma, uh, the alive animals are mukti. That's a person cannot pick up his dog on Shabbat and kiss it and hug and all these things. Why can't so be you careful. Say the dog is uh, edible for the tiger, even if it's alive. Uh, there is no way you're gonna put this dog to a tiger, Habib. Mean, <laughs> you're gonna put the person and put the dog into the tiger before you put so the tiger. What, Rabbi, what about just walking the dog into the tiger? Is that fine? Walking, no problem, but you have to be careful. If you don't have a rule, you'll have a problem with the leash. Let's say, in order to attach the leash onto the dog, you have to pick the dog up or you're gonna lose You cannot pick it up. No. To pick up the dog on Shabbat is 100% happened. Chilul Shabbat. And what if you need to put his identification to go to sleep? One person picks up a dog on Shabbat is worse than using a phone on Shabbat. So what if, what if the dog got hurt? We said if a person moves the phone on Shabbat for alarm clock, we said, it's no problem, right? If it shut off the activation, automatic activation of the screen, I showed you, you, you saw how to do it. Yeah. The last Shabbat you can't. I did it for the Shabbat. Right? Because there's a purpose for it. Right. And also you're not maktib, the but by the dog, it's a hundred percent mukta on the highest level. Whatever That's the people I have. Those pets have to be careful. Tell them you're allowed to walk with it on Shabbat, but make sure there is a roof and make sure uh, that you don't pick him up Why on not? Shabbat. Why? Mukta. So you can pick up your kid, but you cannot pick up the dog. It's animal. It's right. Yeah, animal is not the same, same status. No. Your son is not mixed. Yeah, your son is not mixed. Why not? Huh? Birds and you, 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 you cannot son, pick you up birds. You cannot pick up birds and shut up. Yeah, if it's fun. By the way, you cannot the control it. Yeah. You're not, you don't have to stay still. <laughs> yeah, that's no problem. <laughs> yeah, if you purposely intend for that. You're moving him, you're doing all these things. Now I was asking if Kabbalistically it's, it's good to get a dog from the house. It's not the best thing, no. Not the best thing to have. But you have to know your level of the house. There's many things Kabbalistically are not appropriate. So you have to know where is your household. In my house, I wouldn't bring let it in. But not everybody can be in a Kabbalistic level. Huh? Yeah. What do you need that headache for? If, if he doesn't eat on time, he curses you. What if you invite him to the place? You know that? As for some person has animals in the house, birds, dogs, all these things, they don't eat on time, you forgot, you went on vacation, something happened, and they cried out to Hashem, your life is at risk. But not fish, right? Not fish, right? Yeah, and they don't. They're more, more, nowadays, it all depends on us. It's not like back in the day. You used to have a, in a backyard, free, he goes, he catches this, he goes, catches that. He's sitting down, waiting for you. Baruch Shachanu Mishalo. Maybe if you got hurt, there is hurt, you like hurt, you know, physically got hurt. There are ways around. So, but, but just generally speaking, generally speaking, it's mukti. He has no purpose of Shabbat. No. It has nothing to do with Shabbat. It's like uh, if you have a wrapper, or we said, of, uh, of uh, candy. candy. After you open the candy, you finish the candy. What's the purpose of the wrapper? No. Nothing. If that's why it's 100% mukti. The wrapper? The wrapper, yeah. You gotta be very careful with that. People can open candies, bamba, whatever, they, all these wrappers that they open. After you finish, what, what's there to do with this? Well, you, you, but you say you can throw it out. No? You have to ride it with throw it out. So While it was in your hands, that. you finish the bamba thing, Let's say you like to clean it thoroughly. It didn't leave anything behind. The had mehem lo nota. Yeah, it's still good. It's still edible, the thing inside. But let's say you, Habibi, don't leave anything behind. Make every every penny worth. You have no purpose for that bag anymore. It's dirty, it's oily. You're not going to do anything with it. How about the blind man dog that you said? That's no mukte. Yes, not Mukse to walk with him if he, uh, there is no roof. <coughs> but there is, there is still Mukse to pick him up. <coughs> What's the purpose of you picking up? Even if a person blind him, the there is no blind. purpose to pick him up. Got it? That's why pets on Shabbat Mukse and don't pick them up. Got it? Only when it's her, there is ways around. But it's like I have a problem. Now, how do I come out of the problem? But first, our point right now is to let you know that there is a problem. 
because a person can come to synagogue for next, the next 120 years and he's always going to just hear parasha, 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 and he's going to say, stay uh, parush, he doesn't know anything. On the Farshivro Mesa Stanisa. From all this parasha, 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 needed to give chizuk. But the main idea should be to know what to do. Some people give directions to this? Farshivro Mesa, yeah. Argentinian people. Yeah, you can Google it. Delicatessen. Animals are mutsa because. No purpose of Shabbat. I mean, they give, what if they give you, let's say, emotional relaxation? You said, we said yesterday, if you get pleasure on moving your chair, then it's not uh, moves. We'll talk about it. So your question the is the post debate. What if the dog is giving your you... Your post debate about your question. Makes you feel better. Yeah. Bottom line, Sasu. What, the pet? Bottom line. But there is, yeah. there is exception. If you pick up a dog, licks you, okay, but, dog. I'm but it's not our point right now. I see people they get pleasure from Okay, number three. David, read number three. Is raw meat of a domestic animal mukta and what are all the proofs? Raw. Oh. Domestic, you mean like dogs, cats? Uh, no, kosher. I should, maybe I should write. In Hebrew, I wrote behema, which is kosher domestic, but I should specify that. Aim basar shel behema tehora. Domestic animals. Raw meat is not mukta. The opinion against this, Rav Chizda holds that Rav Yehuda was generally strict with mukta, who would not allow it in this case. However, there are multiple proofs supporting that the meat is not mukta. As follows: One, Rav Huna allowed the meat as did Rav Shimon, and we hold like Rav Huna, who would Rav Chizda's teaching. Here, so Rav Chizda said, like Allah is like Rav Yehuda, that is usually strict with mukta. That's how Rav Chizda holds. But Rav Huna. He said, no, Allah is like Rabbi Shimon. Anytime Rav Chizda argue with Rav Huna, who is Allah like? Like Rav Huna. Why? Because Rav Huna was the teacher of Rav Chizda. So, so and Rav Huna ruled, Allah is like Rabbi Shimon in the laws of Mukhtse, which is more lenient. And Rabbi Shimon holds, that raw meat is not a mukta. So therefore we're going to rule like Rabbi Shimon that it's not mukta. Next, the odd. Maran didn't differentiate what type of raw meat is not mukta. No? Rather, he just said raw meat is not mukta, so we can derive from here that even domestic animal raw meat is permitted. Very good. Next. In Hulin, it's written that one that slaughters an animal on Shabbat for a critically sick person Another healthy person is allowed to eat from that meat, and it was not specifying what type of meat. Therefore, all raw meats are permitted. Very good. Number four, the Yerushalmi says that it's allowed to make an air touchman since the Babylonians eat it, and that's how the Rambam and Maran are ruled. Five, Mishnei Lamela. Are ruled? Is the English grammar right? Just ruled, right? Not R. Take out the word R. Okay. Mishnei Lamelech had a doubt if it's possible to fulfill a mitzvah by consuming something not the normal way of eating. Even though we have a mitzvah to eat, a sacrifice when Yom Kippur happens on a Friday and the following day it's prohibited to burn the leftovers, they still ate it raw. And that's a proof that eating the raw meat counts as Yom Kippur a mitzvah of eating the holy sacrifice. Right, say it again. Falls. Falls on Friday. Hold on, then. No? Yeah, people falls on Friday, no? Yeah. What happens? Uh, Hold on. Falls is blessed. Um. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Just do a question in the last <laughs> Yeah, maybe make the grammar right. R. So the R, R, R ruled? What was the other one you said? Uh, That's how the Rambam and Maran rule. Yeah, but what, what's written? R ruling. R ruling. R U R ruling. So take out the word R. Okay, thank you. Okay, now what, what other note you have? When you keep on falls on Friday instead of falls on Friday. Ah, okay. Falls, okay, thank you. Falls on Friday. Okay, next. So if Yom Kippur falls on Friday, what do we say? Huh? It's prohibited to burn 
they still ate, ate it raw. And that's the proof that eating raw meat counts as a mitzvah of eating the holy sacrifice. Yeah? All of the new people they eat? They, no, no, on Friday they ate. The following ah, day, Friday it's going to be Yom Kippur. Uh, okay, Ravadi Yosef proof, pushed off this proof. Since, read the David. It could be explained differently, that the only reason they ate it raw was to remove any leftovers from the sacrifices from the Holy Temple. But nevertheless, there was no fulfillment of any mitzvah. However the case may be, in conclusion, raw meat will count as edible. Very good. Next, Psachim. Is raw meat, is raw prohibited fact, Moksa? Gener no, well, well. Number four. Yeah, yeah, generally, whoever eats forbidden cooked fat. Psachim, generally, whoever eats forbidden cooked fat is liable to bring a sacrifice to atone for that mistake. However, if he eats it raw, he's exempt from the sacrifice, since this is not a normal way of eating. We learn from here that raw fat counts as not edible and therefore it's looked. Good. So what do we, you could have said since raw fat is not edible, that's so you don't have to bring sacrifice for that. So too, maybe raw meat is not edible. What do we say? However, read. However, it's not comparable to raw meat, even of a nevela, somebody who died without slaughter, that is not mukta because raw meat isn't edible. Got it? Raw meat is, not isn't. Yeah. Right? Is. is. Yeah. Got it? Raw fat is mukta. Why? Because it's not edible. Fat. Fat. If a person eats, Davidov, if a person eats raw fat, not kosher fat, fat supposed to be cooked, shashlik, or fry, or do something with it. You don't take raw meat, uh, raw fat and just eat it like that. What if a person did it? Is he liable to bring a korban for that now or no? It's karet. Huh? Bechor. I told you last time, if a person is eating non-kosher meat, let's say of a cow, he makes many more sins than eating 100% pig. Because in one piece of pig, there's only one prohibition. Pig. There is no blood problem. There is no nevela trefa problem. There is no Gida Nashe problem. There is no Hele problem. However, in a non-kosher piece of meat, beef, if it's not done the right way, it could be much more dangerous than eating 100% bacon. Much more dangerous. Five times more dangerous. There's more restrictions there. Right. That's why before, whenever a person goes on a cruise and he tells you, Ya tolka gavyadze ve kushu, ya svinun yukushu. I don't have time, money to spend kosher trip. Uh, I eat only beef. Or chicken. I would tell him, better for you, I'm telling you 100%. If your life would be at risk to eat the pig versus you're going to eat that meat. Many less things Mixed. you're going to get by the pig. And no karet. By the pig, the, the highest level you can go is love. Hashem said, don't do it. But by the non kosher piece of meat, there is, it could be a risk of karet level over there. Besides the, how many lavim there are inside there. Blood. Blood. And the Vela. Terefa. And Haile. Five. Nagatov. It's a bit all about. But you know. Yeah, that's what I said. Nevela or Terefa. Either Nevela, the Shkita was not done Shalom. Or the sick animal was sick. Uh, by pig, we don't care. Animal sick, animal shita, blood, chochotish. It doesn't talk. It does, the Torah doesn't restrict all of the other things by pig. Say, don't eat pig, tamo. So that's why a person that buys meat, Rabotai, that's not a joke. You buy meat for your for yourself. You buy meat for your house, uh, for your parties. I mean to say, you make yushvo, you make bar mitzvah, brit milah, all these things. Don't say it's okay, Rabbi. Don't be fanatic. Show me your daily. Always, Rabotai, it's better for you to pay extra if needed, but make sure you're not making other people sin on your party, on your gathering, in your Shabbat tables. I'm not sure about this. Make sure you have the highest standards of when it comes to kashut. Highest standards. Who would be the highest right now? Uh, it's not so simple to find highest. But you can ask, 
But you can ask Rabbi Gadayev, he's expert in all the fields. You know, he's, he knows all these fields. So if you can, I'll know. give you the, 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 the phone number. No, I don't buy your, uh, from a public uh, stores. I have my own personal shochet. I pay him extra money to work for me. And uh, but it's not so simple because you have to buy a lot one time. So why don't you? No, one, one freezer, extra one extra freezer. So why don't you share? <laughs> but that's a uh, that's a uh, exp more expensive. More expensive. You have to make sure to patagde tibo, patagde starova, patagde tritzeva. There's few people you have to take care of. They have to, otherwise the, it goes the regular way. No, nothing to do with the. No, 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 no. It's nothing to do. He wants extra because the requirements I asked him are much slower, much slower. And the general public, they, their knife, it's not being checked on every single shita from all three directions. They checked in the morning, and then continues. If something was found later problem, uh, it got mixed. Here, every knife, I tell him every time you check, you check from three directions. When you open the lungs, you check, like the Kafa Haim requested, one finger, two fingers, a whole hand, then you go inside. You know how to do it yourself. So much. Right? Yeah, I used to do it myself, but it's a nightmare because you don't have all the tools to deal with this kalpatum. <laughs> so, yeah, the shita is simple. You shift it, amor. One, uh, one second, maybe five seconds. But uh, take care of it afterwards. The processing afterwards. The the What is it called? The process. Shunama, kerezegi, no, 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 all these no. things. Melicha, Melicha, Niku, Skinny, Skinny. It's a very bad headache, big headache. I I did it myself, you know, with the, it's impossible. How much impossible? I used to wake up nets, come back home, sleep maybe one, two o'clock in the morning. Ne all day. Mission impossible. It's now, no, it's, uh, when you go, people say, Rabbi, you go, do from me, do from me, do from me, do from me. <laughs> and then you have to process the entire thing. Wow. It was very hard. So I decided, if it's not your time, Abraham, it's your money. That's the rule in life. My wife told me, it's either your time or money. Always remember that. You don't want to drive the kids to Brooklyn? No problem. Pay somebody to do it. You, you want to learn Torah? Pay somebody. You don't want to learn Torah? Huh? You pay someone? Yeah, what can I do? If not, I have to go I have two hours a day, two hours come back every day. Then how am I going to learn Torah? So I have to pay someone. Oh, about that. Yeah. Always, and Ravari Yosef always said, remember this rule about I for life. Always exchange something that it is returnable versus something that it's not returnable. Mm. It says, money comes, money, money goes. goes. Money goes, money comes. Time goes. There it comes. So always exchange something that it is returnable versus something that is not returnable. Important to remember this equation. Yeah? Okay. Number five, six. Uh, David, read. What's the opinion of Rabbi Vardy and Ben Ishai regarding carrying raw meat? Ben Ishai restricts carrying raw meat on Shabbat because it's not so common nowadays to eat raw meat. Pashokhan added that even to the dogs it doesn't fit since it's expensive. Uh -huh. However, Rabbi Vardy disagrees. So Ben Ishai says the raw meat is mukta on Shabbat. Mm -hmm. Are you here? Raw meat, mukta Shabbat. Why? He says, nobody eats it. No people, guess what? No dogs. Why? He says, you're not going to give it to the dog. Why? Too expensive. It's too expensive. <laughs> this answers your question earlier. The cats are not muksa because could be eaten by the tiger. You're not going to give it to the tiger. You pay top dollar for that. You're taking it to the vet every single day to make sure he's alive. He's, <laughs> his blood pressure is right. He doesn't have diabetic. <laughs> <laughs> you're taking like care of it like crazy. <laughs> So that's why he says it's not meant to be eaten, and therefore, to the dogs neither, neither to the people. 
So it's hundred percent mukse. Where Rav Adi Yosef says not so. Why? Read. Number one, someone in the world will read it. <laughs> Number two, no one until the Ben Ishai distinguished between their times to nowadays. Number three, even though people became more sensitive, it is still not disqualified from being an edible item. And in case of need, of any should be a. Eh? And in case of need, someone not a need. Need. A need. Okay. Both right? Yeah. Number four. And in the case. A, gour- a gourmet restaurant in, does in serve case of raw meat with spices. It's true. Yeah, a gourmet food. restaurant, you hear this? Does serve raw meat with spices. Yes. So here's the biggest proof that it's edible, says Rabbi. Yes. Gourmet, see, top dollars is a push. Olam afuk haiti. Less work, cost more money. Elam chelam hamidama. Yeah. Number seven. To avoid the raw meat from spoiling, is it allowed to put it inside the refrigerator? In any case, to avoid it from spoiling, it's allowed to carry it and put it inside the refrigerator. To avoid yeah. So remember to move the freeze uh, the meat inside the freezer. Bottom line, allowed or no? Yeah. Allowed. If you want to be strict, like Ben Ishai, don't do it. But halakha, what's halakha? Okay. It's allowed. Remember, Rabotah, always what's halakha? The stringencies you can put on yourself. Halakha, you have to remember to tell your surroundings, your wife, your father, your mother, whoever it is around you. If you don't, don't, don't tell them. If they don't listen to you, don't tell them. It just causes arguments. It causes hatred to the Torah. No point to that. Of that. Okay? So we finished all the way to Baruch Hashem, page 18. Wow, look at this. In a few days, we already got to page 18. Okay, let's go a little bit Zohar then. Where is our Zohar? No, there was another one there. Tavilan, what's that? Yeah, for something. No, all the chaler. Shulchan, I forgot. We're in the middle of a story of Yonah over there. Yeah. Very interesting story. This is the Yamei Seder Ayom. This is the Shabbat. Okay. So yesterday, Rabotai, we spoke about how the Zohar compares the neshama of a person to the story of Yonah. Yonah Navi, that was sent by Hashem to go to let for a mission. Yeah. And it says, yeah, go to tell Ninve that they have to do Tshuva, basically to a, for a certain mission. Yeah. Says the Zohar, the same thing is Yosef, our Neshama Yosef, our Neshama sent to this world for the same purpose. We have a reason why we come to this world for. Mm-hmm. And that reason, Yetzirah makes us forget. The purpose we came here, it makes us forget. And we tempted to go into the boat and go deeper and deeper into the ocean. And what's the boat? The body. And what's the body? What's the ocean? The pleasures. Materialist. And the Yetzirah tells you, the deeper you're going to go into the ocean, the more interesting you'll get. And you'll enjoy more. Ah, Bechor, tell me about it, you saying. <laughs> if so, it says that Hashem makes, it, makes the person wake up. As the Malachim, which is the sailors, woke up Yonah. And that's the famous line we sing in Slichot. Slichot is coming up in two months. You ready for two months, Slichot? Tamuz Av, Tamu, Elul Prashot. What's the first line you say? Shas Tamuz, Nachon? Tamuz finishes, then the next what's what's gonna be? Ah, ah finishes what's gonna be? Hello. Two more months. Selichot. What's the opening line of the Selichot? Ben Adam Alechanirdam. What's that line? Human being. What are you sleeping? Who was told that line? Yonah. When he was inside the boat, the capi- uh, captain, captain, how you call this guy? Yeah. Captain. captain. Called everybody to do something to save the situation. The boat is about to sink. And they told Yonah, Ben Adam, what are you sleeping? The boat is about to sink. Yonah heard that. What Yonah is doing? Ah, uh, drink. Uh, Drinks. Let me forget about the problems. 
drinking, it says the Zohar, it's comparable to a person that is into the more materialism world. He has a problem, instead of trying to solve the problem, what is it Yitzhak tells him? Go right now, a big, better vacation. At the vacation, go, go something better, go to a party, go start dancing, go do whatever, all the prohibited things. You, you owe, owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. And like this, the Yonah drinks to forget the problem by materialistic thinking. God going to heal emotional problems. Continue the Zohar and says, until came back Rabbi Hovel and he says the captain, who's the cap- captain in the parable? Is the Yetzeratov, the good inclination of the person. He comes and he says, Alo, get serious about life. Today you're 40, tomorrow you're 50, tomorrow you're 60, time by, goes by. And then the conversation starts. And listen to this beautiful conversation the Zohar says. He says, whenever the captain met Yonah, what was the conversation between the two? Do you know what the conversation was? Huh? Number one question the captain asked from Yonah, you know? Listen what he tells him. What is it? What's the reason you have a storm in your life? What did you do in this world? First question he says that the captain asked Yonah is the question that Yetzer Atov is reminding us. Maybe I should improve myself. I'm doing this thing wrong. I'm doing that thing wrong. Maybe I should change myself. That's the first thing that Yetzer Atov reminds a person and start improving of the person. Second question. It says, you right now upset at your sister. You are now upset at your brother. You are now upset at your brother-in-law. You are whatever upset that you are. You know why you are upset? Because you forget where you came from. If you came from, a, if you remind yourself, I, uh, who am I to get upset? I am a walking stinky drop. If you'll remind yourself that you are a walking stinky drop, <laughs> you're not going to get any upset. When you get upset, when you feel of yourself, oh, Habibi, I have a jewelry store, I have a pharmacy, I'm making money, I am such a good person, I am donating, I am such a good husband, I am such a good father. When you remind yourself how good you are, you forget that you are a stinky drop. And when your gava is higher, your expectations are higher. And whenever Yaakov, when the expectations are higher, the disappointments are higher. You expect about your wife, about your boss, about your brother. He has a lot of money. He definitely has to help me to open the next business. Uh, so says the Zohar, the second thing, that the Marava Hovel asked Yona, the captain asked Yona, he says, From where are you? I said, What was the third thing? Remind yourself, says the Yetzeratov to a person. Remind yourself that you are a walking, stinky drop. You came from nothing. Third question, It says, you came, where you came from? Rabbi Chovel asked Yonah, Yonah tells him, Dushan Bet, Tashken, Samarkand, where you came from? Then he asked him, <laughs> where are you heading towards? Yetzirah tells the person, Yetzirah Tov tells the person, remind yourself, where are you heading towards? Uh, where are you heading towards? Where are you heading towards? Badur Nihok! Inside the ground! Remind a per- imagine a person right now who is upset about his sister. He get a phone call from the doctor and says, listen, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, 
results that we saw your blood blood work, you have one day to leave. You call your sister. Right? Your cancer is not number four; it's number forty. Tomorrow is your last day. Are you going to be still upset at your sister? Huh? Or are you going to say, I better call my sister before I'm about to go? You're going to try to resolve all issues you have with people before you're going. You're not going to let yourself die with such a bad negative thing if it was in your hands to make the shalom. So what's the reason a person is not making the shalom? Because they think I still have time. But if you remind yourself that I'm heading towards the grave, towards the, the death, what's the point? If tomorrow I'm dead, what's the point I'm going to be upset on my sister? What's the point I'm going to be upset on my father? What's the point I'm going to be upset on my employees, on my whatever I'm upset about? So I said, that's the third question. The captain asked Yona, and the Yetzer Atov is asking you to remind yourself. Where are you heading to, right? Huh? Where are you heading to? Where are you heading to? If your wife right now screamed at you, or your wife is not as happy as you expected her to be. What do you say, Nadayele, does you not believe me, Rabbi, I don't do nothing anymore in this house. That's it, I'm done. I am upset. Yosef, if tomorrow is going to go inside the ground, is he going to try to make everything possible to make her happy so she'll remember how good husband she had? Huh? Would, she, would he do everything in his hands, in his abilities, to make her happy, or is he going to say, the heck with her, I'm dead? <laughs> that, there is no way to go back, that's it. Under the ground, finished. You're going to make sure to do everything possible to leave a good name after you die. To your wife, to whoever you are surrounded with. So it says, that's the question number two, Yetzirah is to constantly remind you, Yaakov, where are you heading towards? And that last question, it says when a person is in problems, you have to remind himself, do I have any yetzer, any zechuyot of my nation, of my forefathers? You come to Hashem, you say, Hashem, for me, I don't deserve. Even though I woke up nets, even though I went to mikveh, even though I gave tzedakah, even though I learned Torah, even though I do everything the right way, I don't deserve, I still don't deserve. But Hashem, you know, I had a grandfather who was such a tzaddik in Siberia, Russia. He was starving and he didn't eat non-kosher. He, my grandmother was going through hell until she went to Mikveh. But she made sure to go to Mikveh. In my marriage, Hashem, I don't deserve nothing. Not to flip the next deal. Not to be approved for the next mortgage. Not to be making money with the next pharmacy. I don't deserve any of it. But Hashem, you know, I have tzaddikim grandfathers. They, in their zechut. I said, that was the fourth question that the captain asked Yonah. From which nation you are? So I said, so what does that mean? Look, do you have any zechut avot that you will be able to say Hashem in their zechuyot, not in my zechuyot? Moshe Rabbeinu is asking Hashem to let the Jewish people forgive the Jewish people. What does it say? What Moshe Rabbeinu is telling to Hashem? Zechor who? Zechor how I gave up my life. I was about to kill myself for the for Am Israel. How did I took them out of Egypt? How did I, I had to divorce my wife? I had to, do, I had to do everything for you, Hashem. Remember that? That's what Moshe Rabbeinu said. Huh? I woke up nets. I went to, to Kibret Sadikim. I went to Israel to pray by the Kotel. What, Hashem, you owe me. After such a trip, after such a mitzvah, of course you owe me. That's how Yetzirah makes us feel. And what does the captain, which is the Yetzirah Tov, tells us to do the Neshama? Remind yourself, do you have any forefathers, any ancestors, any grandfather, any great-grandfather, that in their merit you'll be able to be saved from a sickness, from a problem that you are facing right now, from the storm that you are facing right now. How many generations? It's closer, it's better. If it's your father's zechut, it's closer. If it's your grandfather's zechut, it's already weaker. But it's still there. So you should never pray, Rabotai, in your zechut. And you should never feel that you have any zechut to get answered, to get something by a Kadosh Baruch Hu. You're always in debt. 
So you always have to come to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and say, Hashem, until today I was in debt and you helped me out. Hashem, and now I'm also in debt. Please help me out. But when a person comes and says, I, I pray the right way, I made sure not to miss Korbanot, Pitum Aktorot from Klav. I mean, after Pitum Aktorot from Klav, Hashem owes me to give me Parnasa. Parashat Aman. Yeah. <laughs> At the same time, when you're proud of yourself, it's also inspiring. You inspire, it's inspiring yourself. It keeps you going. If you're going to put yourself down all the time, you... Down all the time? You should not put yourself down all the time. I'll tell you what's the right equation. You should put yourself down as far as your deeds, say I'm never, I'm, I'm not there yet, but to such a low life like me, how much mercy Hashem has. Hmm. He still keeps my wife with me, he still keeps my panasa. Yeah, yeah, you, you realize, when are you realizing good? When you kill the I deserve feeling. Whenever you put that feeling down, smallest thing in your life will be wow. When you feel that I, I deserve that, and Hashem gave me, you, do, you feel you deserve a million dollars, Hashem gave you half a million dollars, so what is this? Not enough. But when every expectation is, I don't deserve to stay alive, and Hashem gave me half a million dollars? Wow. Same half a million. Why now you're happy? Because the expectation became lower. So it says that the Yetzer Ara, uh, sorry, Yetzer Atov reminds the, the Neshama, the, the person, do you have any Zechut Avot? It doesn't say, do you have any Zechut? Do you have any reason that Hashem should answer you? If the moment you rem remember that you have any zechut, you lost it. Yeah. So from now on, Rabotai, whenever we pray to Akadosh Baruch we say, Hashem, I don't have any zechut. Even though I helped my wife the other day, even though I helped that rabbi the other day, even though I did something for the synagogue the other day, I still don't feel I have any zechut. Please, Hashem, mercy on me. I have a grandfather, I have a grandmother. Not me, I don't have anything. When you remind yourself that you don't owe, uh, deserve anything, you'll be so happy getting anything that Hashem will give you. You're going to get $10,000, you're going to be happy. You're going to get, instead of two eyes low wall, be able to see, one eye is going to see, you're going to be happy. Because you don't, don't deserve to see with both of them. Think today it was hot outside. How many people were looking in the prohibited pictures outside? We with uh, visions outside. How many? How many times you look today in prohibited vision outside? Nobody here. No, nobody here. That's there was one guy offered me free laser. He said, Rabbi, come, I'll give you free laser. I said, don't ever repeat this uh, offer anymore. <laughs> Hashem gave me the best gift in the world. Whenever I go outside, bam. <laughs> That's it, can't see anything. With this, you see everything. So I want to keep that gift with me. So a person that goes through this, if you have two eyes, that went against Hashem. Do you deserve to look in those two eyes to see with them anymore? Do you deserve that anymore? No. So if you're going to get pain in one eye, do you say, ah, yesterday I gave Sadaqah, look what Hashem did to me. You understand? If you remind yourself that with the sins I have done with two eyes, I don't deserve to see any with any of them. And Hashem, you still gave me one eye to see. The high second one is a little bit... You're never going to be upset. No matter what problems you're going to face in life, you're always going to be happy. And whenever you're happy, you're always going to be reconnected to the Torah and the mitzvot. Amen. Amen. We should be successful in this mission. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen. Amen. Rabbi Hanania. Ben Agashia Omer Atzah Kadosh Baruch Hu Le'olam. Amen. 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 Amen.